All right, everybody, welcome to Myth Busting the Elevator Pitch webinar. And I'm Laura Camacho. For those of you who don't know me, this is my friend and colleague and someone I respect so much and enjoy so much, Jocelyn Ring. Happy to be here. Yes. 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 We're happy to see everybody today. Um, so you might have been intrigued by the messaging of the the emails that we sent out and the sign up page. So we just want you to know that you're in the absolute perfect place if you are a professional building your career, a thought leader, a coach, a consultant, anybody who wants to get their message out into the world and feel clear and confident when you do it. Um, anybody who never wants to fear the question, so what do you do ever, ever again? You're in the right place. Um, if you're done Googling for templates to fill in the blanks to come up with that perfect pitch that's going to just bring clients and opportunities in your door. We got you covered. And, you know, we're just, we're going to have fun in this half hour and share, share some tricks. That's right. Time. No, no, no. We're going to share, because we are both like card carrying introverts. We forgot our cards to yes. show them, but um, <laughs> we are serious about that. So we want our conversations to count. Now for this half hour, uh, we're going to go switch to some slides for a little bit, and then we're going to come back. But anytime you have, we'll do Q and A at the end. But if you, you know, have a burning question, um, you pop know, please pop, pop it in the chat box, and we are going to um, switch to the slides. And. So we are here at Myth Busting the Elevator Pitch. I want to thank uh, Emily. She's my assistant out in Tahoe for helping to put this together. And I want to thank Jocelyn. This was really actually, I had done the workshop and she was the one who said, why don't we do this in your webinar? So what are we, um, what are we here about? Why, what is the purpose of this? We want you to feel more relaxed at networking and social events because the things that you're going to learn today you, is not just for official networking events, but also shows social events. Both Jocelyn and I have gotten clients just by talking to people randomly, but you have to talk about your business in a way that feels comfortable and that's attractive. We want authentic relationships with interesting people. Um, you know, unpublished job offers, because we, we want, this is for people both in corporate and self-employed and people in the middle with a side gig. I just this morning, I got a unpublished job offer from someone in my network, and of course, I'm not going to take it, but hey, how cool is that, that she reached out to me, so this sounds just like you. And then, of course, referrals, referrals for jobs, referrals for business. My business is, I think, like 99.999% built on referrals, and Jocelyn's is uh, something is similar. Uh, we, we have a lot of material to cover, um, and um, at the end, we're going to offer you an opportunity to do a deeper dive into this material because what we're going to give you to now are the principles, but if you want to know like specifically how to use it in your case, uh, we'll talk about uh, that at the end, but we've got a ton of value, and I do mean a ton. We're giving you like the things that can really change your life as far as socializing. And um, hope you will stay tuned till the end. It's going to go by quickly. So for those of you who don't know me, this I'm Laura Camacho. I founded McSonian Institute in 2009. I speak several languages. I have a bunch of degrees. I've always been obsessed with developing human potential. My career in, as a, in professional development started in the early 90s, actually, in Caracas, Venezuela. I was a facilitator for the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Also had my own time management class there. And then when I moved back to the States, later on, uh, I was a college professor in the communication department. I have a crazy family, you know, children, stepchildren, dogs, and my people are introverts and brainiacs. And Jocelyn, so I'm Jocelyn Ring. I'm founder of my brand strategy practice, which is called The Ring Effect. I am a learning junkie, so multi-degreed and lots and lots of certifications. I just love learning. I'm obsessed with helping people develop their uniqueness and what makes them shine and build a legacy on, around that. Um, in addition, I'm a visual, visual facilitator, so the picture you see behind me and my headshot and 
what we've created here for our backdrop is something that I do. Um, also a leadership coach who partners with equines. Yes, that's horses. And I think there's some people on the call and we've connected through that. So you know how amazing that work is. Um, I am a crazy dog person <laughs> and horse lady and I love my family too. <laughs> and like Laura, introverts are my peeps as well as multi-potentialites. Um, that's a term. Uh, <laughs> I think she made Emily, that up. No, Emily, <laughs> Emily Wompack, I think is her last name. <clears throat> she gave a great TED talk about people who have lots of threads and interests in their life and how to weave them together. Oh. So I am totally obsessed with Elon Musk and I like the way he uh, thinks it's possible for ordinary people to be, to choose to be extraordinary. And that's uh, what we're about and what today is about. Our agenda is really about how you talk about yourself and your business or your career can really make you stand out and be uh, extraordinary. And this material uh, is something that people ask me about all the time. In fact, I was asked to do a workshop on this, which I did. It sold out in March, and actually Jocelyn was there, and that's why she, she said, why don't we do this material in your webinar? Uh, but because so many people, even extroverts, who don't have any trouble talking to people, and they're energized by that, but they have trouble feeling comfortable talking about their business or their career, especially when they're, um, what they do can be confusing or dif different aspects to it. Or as Jocelyn said, those of you who have different businesses or multi potentiates. So we're gonna uh, cover uh, three myths. We're gonna tell you what to do about it. And then we're gonna give you an option to do a deep, deeper dive into that. Uh, now, we're going to go back to give you the chance. I want you in the chat, please, to tell us what frustrates you about elevator pitches. Is it feeling fake, fear of bragging? Is it nervousness, awkwardness? You just get tired talking to people. I'm, I'm kind of... Um, running on, but I want you all to share in the chat, if you can, uh, what issues you have about networking. Being put on the spot unexpectedly. Yes, that's a, that is um, hard. <laughs> and even today when people ask me a question that, that I'm not expecting, I have to, it takes me a minute to process. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, because that's, a, that's an introvert thing. We, yeah. that's, that's a big difference. Extroverts are able to like think out loud and introverts need time to process. Oh yeah, feeling rehearsed. Yes, that's, I was just coaching someone yesterday around that. Don't want to see, to, plus if you're rehearsed, if you're like, reciting a script, you're not fully present in the moment. Um, awkwardness, joining another one. group conversation. Yes, I know how that feels, trying not to cater um, to what the person wants mm -hmm. to hear, right? Shorten the length. Yes, it's individual to each person, it's true. Uh, my consults are in an area most people don't know exist. Wow, well, what you don't know, what you don't know. So, mm -hmm. um, Nicole, your part of your job is educating your public or edu educate as a, I, I, it's a big part of my role too. I mean, communication skills training. I mean, most people are like, how boring or why would anybody possibly be interested in that even though communication is terrible everywhere. So your job is part of it is education. All right, so we're gonna go back to our slides for a second and um, go through these myths that we have. I keep forgetting where the share screen button is. Okay, so we went, myth number one. Okay, <laughs> first of all, you're not gonna close a deal in an elevator. I don't think ever, especially if you live in Charleston because um, there are not many elevators and they don't go very high. Later this month, I'm doing an event where I'm gonna actually be talking to people in elevators and I'm having a hard time finding an elevator. So, but the deeper level is that when you first meet somebody, it's rarely, I mean, I, it can happen, but you, you don't wanna go in expecting to close a deal. Getting transactional too early is a big, 
is so off-putting. Really, people don't want to talk about closing a deal when they just learned your name. There can be exceptions to that, but generally, uh, the you know, it's not that you're just going to go in and start explaining right away the first before they even know your name. So you get married on a first date. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, has yeah, have you ever met somebody and then just gotten engaged that same conversation? No. And then another myth, and a lot of you have are, are familiar with it and they're not like, how do I handle that? The same pitch doesn't work for everybody. And some of you have, like I included myself and Jocelyn, I know we have different things for different people. So how do you talk about it uh, when you don't know where that other person is coming from? So that's another huge myth. And then the biggest myth of all is that you only need one conversation. You need a lot of conversations. And actually, I was doing some research on team selling and the, the sales process. If you're dealing with corporate, and in corporate I mean jobs and I mean selling business to business, um, you are going to need, the companies are taking more time and they're getting more people involved. So it's going to be probably not only multiple conversations, but also multiple people that you're talking to. And I just want to give you an example of the, you know, what if you only have one pitch and you think it's one conversation. So just imagine that if you live in Charleston, you know, we have a lot of really bad drivers here and a lot of unnecessary accidents. So just imagine that I start a business where I teach people safe driving. And so, cause like we have, like even on this bridge in town, people have accidents when all you have to do is go in a straight line, but people have a hard time with that. So imagine I'm explaining to somebody, I just met them and I'm explaining, you know, I've got this great way to get people to stop texting and educating them on safe driving. And then I find out that the person is a driver for NASCAR. Well, then I totally lost that person as far as, I mean, of course, a NASCAR driver doesn't want to know how to teach a teenager to stop texting. And even if in my toolbox, I also have NASCAR level expertise, he doesn't want to hear it from me, right? Because I've, I've really just kind of shut the door uh, to doing future business with that person. So it's multiple conversations. They need to be tailored and it doesn't happen right away because we want to build that relationship and building good relationships takes time. So those are the problems. The problems is that you have been taught that seems like there's this myth out there in America that if you just say the right words in the right order and you hold your mouth a certain way and you hold your hands a certain way, then you're going to come up with this magical phrase to introduce yourself and that people are going to buy from you or hire you. And that is, that's false. That is, that is not the case at all. So what we're going to cover are three steps where you're going to build relationships without feeling awkward and not feeling manipulated. And you can have a millionaire's network, really. Because, I mean, that is, what's the difference between us and Elon Musk. I mean, Elon Musk can call on people like uh, Zuckerberg or Sheryl Sandberg. And, you know, he has a billionaire's network, actually. Uh, but you can build that so fast if you um, prepare correctly and, and follow these three steps, which are, you're going to say, well, that's not a big, you know, this is not like rocket science. You're right. It's not, but it, most people don't do it. Number one, you, the, just the overview is that you need to prepare. You need to prepare your audience for your audience. If you can, we understand that you're going to come up with situations um, where you don't know your audience, but you still there are things you can do to prepare. And then it's the process of sharing. And then there's uh, a follow-up. So Jocelyn's going to talk about preparing. So what you want to do before you ever have a conversation, before you go to a networking event, just in order to feel confident so that you don't have that deer in the headlight, put on the spot feeling, um, just think about 
if you know the audience, you can do a little bit of research about the group or the person you're speaking to or the types of people you would like to speak to so you have conversations kind of in the back of your head. Um, and then you wanna go through and you wanna sift through some of your stories that are interesting about your business or results for clients or results that you've gotten. So you have these little vignettes and snippets that you can call up at a moment's notice if you hear something that cues, oh, this, this would be interesting here. Um, what are some metaphors or analogies for business? Because sometimes we go into conversation with our title. I'm a brand strategist. I'm a communications expert. Well, so what? What does that mean? What do you do? Um, I've had several um, conversations with people where I start out at a very high level um, where people say, so what do you do? I say, well, I help businesses that are stuck because I don't know where they're coming from and I'm not sure what they're interested to know. Um, I was actually out on a sandbar on Sullivan's Island and Laura said, what, what bar is that? Yeah, so I, I, she was missing out on a new hot spot. It was, it was not a bar, it was a lump of sand from low tide. And we had pulled our boat up there. And a woman asked me, so what do you do? And I started just with the businesses that are stuck piece. And then she said, I guess consultant landed for her. So she said, oh, you're like a big bad wolf. I'm like, no, I'm actually more like a, a therapist. You know, I want everybody to feel better and have a plan and move forward. And so we went back and forth and she had a little bit better idea of my approach. And she's actually contacted me to put together a proposal for her after several conversations, after mm -hmm. getting to know one another right. socially. And um, yeah, so metaphors can be important. Um, having some conversation openers. So again, that, you know, when you're in a situation where there might be groups of people around the room, there are ways to start conversations and enter gracefully, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Um, just feeling like you have everything with you. So what are you gonna need? Will you need business cards? Will you need something that you can hand someone? Oh, wait, wait, wait. And this, <laughs> sorry, but um, this is important to me, Laura, and you need to eat before you yes. go. Because low blood sugar, will take the wind out of your sails. You won't be able to focus as much. And you don't want to, usually the food at events is not very good. There's even a dinner that I go to that has really good networking. The food is bad. And even though I pay $30, I don't eat there. So make sure you eat, have a snack bar or a snack before you go. That's All right, crashing would be bad. Yeah, no, we don't um, need blood sugar crashing. In, you know, if you think about your own network and if you're going into a networking event or a conversation, think about how you could be helpful. If somebody mentioned something, is there a resource you could refer? Is there a person that you, you know, could say, oh, so-and-so could help you with that. So just right. think about what you can bring to the conversation and then we'll get into the thinking ahead of your exit plan, but we'll That'll be in another. Right. That's, that's especially for introverts. We always need to have an exit plan. But uh, speaking of exit plans, I just want to mention something that's come up in the research lately. And you may have seen this on my social media. It's called conversational narcissism. And it's just when the other person is just, well, no matter what you say, they're always flipping the conversation back to them. And according to this sociologist, it's becoming an ep epidemic. So sometimes you need, if you're going to run into a person who's just so starved for conversation, you might want to have a plan to end that yes. conversation. <laughs> All right. So sharing what, how, what happens now? So Jocelyn has covered like, what do you do before the event? Now, of course, like in the sandbar, the non-alcoholic sandbar, <laughs> she didn't know she was going to meet this lady, but she's done this so much. It's like, it's, it's a habit to her. It's a uh, second nature. So here is the big reveal, the big deal about how do you know what to say? Well, the first, the thing is that you be the first one to speak, but not laying out what you do asking the other person like hey i'm laura camacho how are you today what brings you here do you know the host is this an event you come to but you the person this is important now the person asking the questions is the person in control of the information and in control of the conversation so you take leadership of that conversation by speaking up first, introducing yourself, and asking questions. Now, you don't want to sound like you're an M6 interrogator or Mossad interrogator, 
but you want to ask questions and you should know questions that will give you the information that you need to know what kind of client this person could possibly be or how you can refer you know what kind of business you can refer to them how you can help them because it's, it's both ways it's a two-way street and you may help 10 people and have only two help you but it, it pays off but the big thing with speaking with networking is be the first one and I know Denise asked about awkwardness in joining another group's conversation and I know Denise personally I know that she's um, would never be rude but it is not rude to go bust into another conversation. Most of the time, they're happy, and I mean super happy to have fresh blood or fresh point of view. So just, hey, you guys are look like you're having a good time. You look like, uh, like a fun group. I'm Nicole, I'm Laura, I'm Kim, you know, just introduce yourself. Oh, Paul, you know, they, sorry to interrupt, but they're happy happy to have somebody else to talk to. So anyway, if you want to have success that you want control of the conversation and that's by asking questions and being the first one to speak. And if you cook, as I do, you know about adapting. I'm sure if I were a guy, we would have a sports analogy about football, but I don't know those. I only know cooking. Um, for example, I met someone at a, in a networking event I saw on her name tag that she was on a company that I had targeted. It's a large accounting firm. And I went right up to her, hey, I'm Laura Camacho, who are you? And she said, I'm so-and-so from this accounting firm. And I said, oh my goodness, I work with accountants, which is true, but it's not the whole truth. I mean, accountants are maybe 5% of my client base, but I do work with accountants. And we didn't get into you know, a long discussion. I just told them that, told her generally that I worked with communication skills, high impact skills, and that worked with introverts and that accountants tend to be introverts. And it led to a great friendship and she's referred, she's a great referral partner. Uh, so any group uh, that you talk to, even if it's all in the same industry, like even within accounting, there's different specialties. If you're pitching something to, to venture capitalists, they have different focuses. Some want, you know, to work with people in the uh, green industry or some people are only tech, some people are only for women. So if you have the chance to research before, you're going to have an easier time adapting. If you don't, you still have to choose your questions and adapt what you're going to say to the other person uh, based on the information that you've gotten. So you've got to adapt your message and then finally this is another big takeaway that really should take a lot of stress off of you because the, the goal of meeting somebody is never oh my gosh i got to sell them close them no 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 you just want another conversation that's all you want you want to because that's how you build relationships and maybe you'll have lunch with them maybe you'll invite them to uh, coffee, maybe it's just going to, you're not going to invite them to an event. Maybe you're going to do a Skype meeting, but the goal of the encounter is another conversation. That's all. If you get, if they throw money at you, well, you know, good for you. And you know, you can tell us how, how to do that, but generally your goal is another conversation. And then finally follow up, you know, they say the fortune is in the follow up and that can be a phone call that can be coffee, you can send a card, but those are where the conversations get deeper and you do the deeper dive into uh, your business and what you can do for them. So these are the three steps and who, who does this work for? Well, we're gonna switch back to talk to you face to face, hey, we're back. <laughs> so who is this for? It's for, Anybody who's building a career, you're, I have clients who have whatever position in a company and they're interested in building thought leadership. Um, and and if, when you build yourself as a thought leader, then you automatically get positioned for better job offers, either within or without your company. Uh, consultants, coaches, uh, business owners. I mean, anybody that wants to have more influence in, in the community. 
Um, mm -hmm. What about the psychographics? Jocelyn, why don't you talk to us about yeah, psychographics? So, you know, some people think that natural relationship builders and networkers are born, but we absolutely do not believe that. No. So it's a skill that can be learned. Like we are two <laughs> introverts who yes. we found regularly going to events and having conversations. So you just have to be really committed to growing your business because this really is, even if you're an introvert and you want to hide, your business can't hide. Your business needs to get to know people. Um, so you know what, what you have to offer is really impactful mm -hmm. and you want to be the spokesperson for your business and it is, it's possible. Um, and this is, you know, something that's, that Laura teaches a lot is growth mindset. Mm -hmm. So even if it's something you would, you'd rather do anything else in the world than learn how to get better at this. It's, you can see it as a challenge. Like this is something I want to improve. This is an area that's not my favorite, but it's something that I want to work on. Um, yeah. And when you're, you're over the myths of, you know, looking for templates and knowing that I'll have this perfect 60 second speech that I'll, I'll know exactly the right words to say and the right intonation and the right body <laughs> language. If you're, if you're like, I don't believe that's, that's the way to do it anymore. Then, you know, these three steps in the framework, can work for you. So it's really about connection and relationship building. Like and Laura and I exactly. have known each other for a long time. A long time. Through an acupuncturist. And you know, <laughs> right. it's just it's taken a few right. years for us to figure out like what's something cool that we could collaborate on together. Right, right, right. And this exactly. happens to be it. Yes. So, you know, and we've heard from everybody like the question that we asked at the beginning, what do you hate about it? Or mm -hmm. why do you think this is not possible for you? It's I'm an introvert. I serve many audiences. I feel like I ramble when I talk and I can't rein that in, mm -hmm. or um, I don't like being put on the spot, or I, I feel like I need to say the right thing to the person or else that's the end of the relationship. And we're a firm believer that you show up as who you are and what you have to offer. And even if that person's not the client, um, it does you no service and them no service to try to make that work if it doesn't. So, mm -hmm. but if you just are confident and clear in your conversation and what you have to offer, you will connect with the right person or that person can end up being a referral. To right. You. Absolutely. So, I mean, so, even better because yeah. the more referral partners you have, the better, uh, and referrals, jobs and business, it's really cuts yeah. both ways. Yeah. So those are the things, you know, you have the tools now, you know, to prepare, you know, it's not one conversation, you know, you've got to adapt. If you want to do a deeper dive into this and do your specific job or business, uh, we're having a Converse Don't Rehearse workshop. Yay! <laughs> it's a virtual two-hour small group virtual experience just for six people. That's six. And it's going to be um, July 24th at noon from noon to two. We're going to, you'll We'll be, it'll be Zoom, and so we'll be able to see you. We'll be sending you questions. You'll be doing homework mm -hmm. to prepare. So you'll have two hours of a mastermind slash coaching from both of us um, and practice and input from the other people about how to navigate these conversations. And, and we're going to throw in uh, some, not some, but 50 conversation starters, and you can um, – practice with those. I think it's good to have like five to seven conversation starters. You can even put them on a note on your phone. Um, you'll get this, you know, slides, templates. So we're going to just prepare you so that any event, social and introverts, we work better when we're prepared. Yeah. I know that not everybody is an introvert, but um, th that will definitely help you. And for the extroverts, you'll know like, and maybe I need to stop talking at this point and then mm -hmm. how I can say less that's better uh, adapted to the other person. Uh, so the price of this thing today only is how much did we say it was? <laughs> today is 79. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, first and last time we'll be offering. Yeah, yeah, that's really this low. Really, really low. valuable workshop and we mm -hmm. love love teaching this stuff. Yes, we do. And it's just for you guys today. All right. You can put your friends that we're, we're doing. Like I said, we're going to do six people. If we get more than six today, we'll open up another session. Um, we're going to send a link in the thank you email uh, to, that you'll be getting later today. And uh, does anybody have any questions? We're at 30 minutes, but we'll be happy to stay on for any questions. Uh, does any of this info differ if you're creating an elevator pitch? to advertise a business online. 
Well, that is different because it's, that's more like advertising copy. Uh, the principles are the same, but your message, you have to like come up with your imaginary audience mm -hmm. uh, for Facebook uh, business, like what income, do they have kids? Uh, that's a, that's a whole nother specialty, the Facebook ads, but the principles are the same, but the details of carrying it out are a little bit mm -hmm. different. You yeah. Come up with your, your core messages and some uniqueness and things, things like that in this in this workshop right that's what we're going to come yeah. up with so it might there might be a little overlap but it is it's a little different in what you're trying to achieve we're really going to work on the conversational style and trying to get you out of your head and feeling like right. you need to be memorized about being present about connecting about building that relationship kind of what that looks and like you know what just this morning i was talking to my coach who is susan hyatt and she's a super high flyer very expensive coach and she was saying that your online marketing will not work unless you are confident doing it face to face. Mm -hmm. And she said that's really hard for some people to get, but it's because it's like they say you hire somebody to do Facebook ads for you. You can't convince them to get, they're not going to get the message correct if you can't talk about it right. to them. Like what is the, what is the real benefit or what do you really offer? Any more questions? And Nicole, does that answer for you? Do you feel like you got a good answer? I am in many healing groups and have deep friendships that I've never met in person. How can I translate information? Well, you can get their, you know, get their email. You want to, that's what I would do. Or start or your own group. Start your own group or virtual coffee dates. Yeah. I've done this with people that I Same. find really interesting. Let's yes. hop on a Zoom. Let's get to know each other. Yeah. Just you have a conversation. It's just that instead of face to face, you've got the. I did that monitor. with this woman in South Africa, and it turned out she is the leading woman in tech. She does uh, apps for people, and she was recently in um, Fast Company magazine and some other magazine. I mean, she's a real high flyer in Cape Town. But we just met on LinkedIn. I'm like, hey, let's have a Skype, and she loved it. So. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, so there are there are ways to right to translate your conversation electronically. Right. Any more questions, guys? It's where it's thirty two, but we'll stay as long as you have questions. Denise, if you're still there, did you get? Do you feel like better about busting in and interrupting people? Don't worry about it. And then it's fair game if it's a social <laughs> event. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Well. We'll give a few more seconds, but thank you all for coming mm -hmm. and we appreciate it. This was a lot of fun for us yep. and um, we'll see you later. So yep. thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, one more. Oh, uh, we have one more question. Is there a general length of time you recommend for, for the elevator combo? It really uh, depends. What you don't want to do is be talking about yourself too much. You want to be talking, you want the other person to be giving you information because in sales, I would say, I don't know, we, have, we haven't discussed this before, but I would say the more you can get the other person to share their problems and pain points, the easier the sale is going to be if that's what you're interested in doing. So, mm -hmm. And there's also, if, it, if you think about it, instead of like a, a one-way pitch and a soliloquy of this thing you have prepared and you're delivering, um, there's natural like ebbs and flows and rhythms right. of conversation. And you can kind of tell when you've reached that point where it's time to move yeah. on or close or... But that's by paying attention yeah. to the other yeah. person. Yeah. It's like the whole, this whole thing works on you serving the other person. And that's what we're about. And I will say the story about the... the the length of time thing. And this is, this is the story from a friend of mine. So she was invited to a networking event and she crafted the most perfect, beautiful, it was 90 seconds of <laughs> the benefits of her business and who she's worked with. And, you know, it was perfection. She shows up at the event and finds out it's a speed networking. She has 30 seconds. Oh with my each gosh. Person. Oh Ding. my gosh. So what do you do if you've got this thing and you it's rehearsed and it's 90 seconds. So that's why I think it's super dangerous to have that prepared. Yeah, I would just yeah. be saying, what do you do? And <laughs> yeah. then decide if I want to meet with them later or not. I wouldn't even go into what I right. did in that situation. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody else? Speak now. All right, I don't see any other questions. So we will say goodbye again and see you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> As an extra for you, yes. <laughs>